everybody. This is the Supernatural Fandom Track at Continual, and I'm your host, Gail Z. Martin. Today, we're talking about the end of the road, how Supernatural might end, how we think it should or shouldn't end, how it could have ended, and all of those possibilities, because this is Winchester land, and you always have several poss possible realities and alternate universes. So as we're coming up to the end of season 15, and facing the inevitable, although Winchester's never stay dead for long, we're going to talk about how, how our favorite show might wrap things up. So before we get started, I'm going to let my wonderful panelists introduce themselves. And Stuart, let's start with you. Hi, everyone. I'm Stuart Jaffe. I'm the author of over 40 novels, uh, including the Max Porter Paranormal Mysteries, the Nathan Kay Action Fantasy Series, and the uh, Parallel Society, uh, I guess it's urban fantasy, contemporary fantasy. And I've been watching Supernatural since the beginning. I love this show. So <laughs> I'm there. I'm here. <laughs> Hank? Hi, everybody. Hank Edwards. And I write um, gay fiction and gay romance. And I uh, do it with a paranormal kind of uh, lean to it. So... Um, and I've been published for about 20 years. I also have a full-time uh, day job. And um, I started watching Supernatural. I kind of binged it. I can't remember what season I jumped in, but it was on Netflix. And uh, I was like, gosh, you know, everybody's telling me I love this. Show. They love the show. So I jumped in and I just, you know, I haven't looked back. Crystal? <clears throat> Hi, my name is Crystal Payne. And um, I am... I'm a fan of Supernatural, of course. That's why I'm here. Um, I started watching Supernatural, I want to say, just before season 11 aired. Um, me and my husband and my son started in August and binged all of the seasons until season 11 aired in um, <laughs> October that year. And Melissa. Um, I'm Melissa Kennedy. I am a... Uh, Sorry. <laughs> I am the co-author co editor of um, Conventional Wisdom, which is a book about the supernatural conventions. Um, I've worked as an editor and I've had an eclectic job history. Um, I started watching Supernatural in 2012 when my entire life was falling apart. So I'm one of those supernatural save my life people um, mm -hmm. and binge watched the first six seasons um, and then caught up from there on. It's been, you know, whenever it's on, I watch and absolutely love it and absolutely drives me crazy at the same time. So, <laughs> And I'm Gail C. Martin. I write epic fantasy, urban fantasy, steampunk, post-apocalyptic uh, fiction uh, under that name. And then as Morgan Bryce, I write urban fantasy, male, male, paranormal romance. And um, I've got a chapter in Lynn Zubernus's There'll Be Peace When You Are Done about how Supernatural changed my life and the leg what I see as the legacy of the show. I got into Supernatural halfway through season 11, binge watched 11 seasons in four months in time for the beginning of season 12. And I've been all the way down the rabbit hole since then. So <laughs> Stuart's laughing because he got to watch the whole thing happen. So, uh, well, guys, let's talk about the thing we knew had to be happening someday, but here it is. It's the end of the um, Supernatural Road. And I know there's been talk, well, maybe, maybe there'll be a movie down the line. Maybe there'll be this or that. And the boys have left some doors open for that. But as far as what we know right now, this is going to be the end of, of the show. So... Before we get into spitballing how we think it'll happen, this isn't the first time the show could have ended. During the writer's strike, Mystery Spot actually could have been the last episode ever, which would have been one hell of a cliffhanger. Uh, and then Kripke, of course, thought you know, his original plan was for it to end with Swan Song at the end of season five. So we've had 
on a number of reprieves. And it, it wasn't always guaranteed that they were going to get picked up after that. What do you think about some of those other possible endpoints? Would they have been, how would they have worked for the show and how would they, do you think, have impacted its legacy? And this is a conversation, I figure we're all at the bar just talking about our favorite show. So um, it's Sunday morning, don't make me just point at people, just jump <laughs> in and say things. <laughs> Try not to cut each other yeah. off, when I said, I think we'll all be fine. I'll save you, Gail, I'll get started. Thank you. You, you can always count on me to talk. I, um, I yeah, so, and of course, all my, my quipping there just put the thought right out of my head. Um, I think it, it would have, this is going to sound obvious, but it would have been a very, very different show if it had ended earlier. Obviously, just because all the stuff wouldn't have happened. But I think the, the, not just the characters, but the actors and, and, and not just the boys, but the crew, everybody, because that, that group has been together for a long, long time now. There's a maturity to the story that they're telling now that would not have existed back then. Back then, it, it could have easily been, all right, uh, it's the boys and they're going to go be boys things. But, but there's an op, you know, and, and they could have easily ended it at any any season where they're just riding off to keep keep doing fighting the good fight and that would be it but there's opportunities now because of their age and and the things that the storylines that they've been through and all that that they could they could have a really powerful ending that's not just not just a story the ending of a story if you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think yeah. if, if they had ended it Sorry. No, go ahead. If they had ended it at season five, the original, I, I consider that sort of a exquisite little jewel, those first five seasons. Um, and I think it would have been beautiful and terrible. It would have destroyed me to have it end right there. Um, but it would have, there's a certain, um, there's a certain beauty to it, the way, the way it would have ended. You know, Sam had sacrificed himself to save the world. Dean had gone off trying to have a normal um, life it it worked and at the same time I'm really glad they kept going jump in folks <laughs> Hank yeah that was um, that season five right between season five and season six that um, it's been so long since I've watched them so it's kind of hard to keep all the episodes and there's so many episodes <laughs> <laughs> so old too and tired um, and it's uh, but that, that's kind of like to me that's almost like uh it's like a trilogy right so that's like the first book of a trilogy and then like this the next part becomes like this next adventure or the next uh round of you know discoveries and things like that because it's to get to season 15 they've done so much um with the storyline and with the the uh like the background and the mythos if you will and 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 kind of like you know building on um the the legend like, I don't know what the word is right now it's gone it's Sunday morning and um it's they've really done such a a, a good job of kind of like weaving that through and then building to this point so it's going to be interesting to see how they do it and I think that you know sometimes it's felt like they've wandered you know a little bit right and um uh, everyone says leviathans but um it uh, I think that <laughs> So many people don't, and it's so funny. And I, I think they kind of joke on that. It, it's, I like how they do that. Um, but it's been interesting to see that growth and to see where those characters have gone to. And, and I'm glad that it went this long because they, they got a chance to, you know, bring back mom and, you know, revisit dad and, and do those kinds of fun things and, and bring in other characters, so. Crystal? Yeah, um, I think <clears throat> I loved Swan Song, the end of season five. Um, but I, I, I do think that they would have been doing not only the fans, but the show and, and all of the people that they work with um, a disservice by ending it there. I mean, it was a great episode. And yes, it would have it could have ended there with, you know, Sam dying and Dean going on to live a, a normal life. But um, I think there was just so much more of a story that they could have told and leading up to 
a phenomenal ending would we would have missed on out on all of that. Yeah, I am so grateful <clears throat> that we had the next ten years, and of course. Since it was only supposed to go five years and now we've had an extra 10, the debate is still open on who sold their soul. I think it's kind of obvious, you know, somebody did. It's just a little too neat. Uh, but I'm so grateful for this extra time because we got to see the characters grow up. And while I agree, you know, there were some meanders and some misfires. I'm actually more salty about the Amelia arc than even the Leviathans. Um, I think one of the things that's so brilliant with Supernatural are the mirrors, where you see something and then you see it again, but twisted and different. So Sam had the demon blood, and Dean was kind of judgy about that. And then Dean gets the mark of Cain. Sam had the whole, you know, boy king thing. Dean gets to be a knight of hell. And with all those mirrored experiences, and the show does it so often, there's, you get to see both of them grow up and go, well, hell, looks a little different from the other side. And then you have those reconciliation moments where a much more mature Dean can say, I, I don't care about all that stuff. It's water under the bridge. All I care is that we're here and we're together. You get the reconciliation with John in Lebanon. I'm not a huge fan of Mary, but it did end up that you did get a reconciliation there. And to me, that's just so part and parcel to what Supernatural's um, impact has been about family and uh, reconnecting and healing, that it's hard to imagine the show without that, because that's been so fundamental. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I also think the... Um... Well, I think a lot of it is about, it, while it's about, obviously about family, it's about acceptance of your, of, of family, um, or, you know, what, whether it's a found family or your, your blood family, because they've certainly have both, uh, the boys have both in, in this, their world. And probably without exception, everybody within those two types of families that they have are deeply flawed people. <laughs> And they have to learn to accept these these people on on whatever terms they get them on, uh, which yeah. is sort of real life, isn't it? <laughs> as much as people want to try and fight it, <laughs> yeah. Right now, we could use a little more of that. Uh, and and yeah. and just to go back, because you were asked, you you were wondering who sold their soul to keep the show going. I think it would be very funny if it was Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> because of who he is. <laughs> now there's a thought. <laughs> well, and you know, what we've seen in part of season 14 coming into season 15 is we've had a lot of favorite characters show up and there's this sense of people getting a chance to say goodbye, wrapping up some loose ends. Uh, how have you felt about that or, or which ones meant a lot to you? What outstanding loose ends would you really like to see get resolved before the door finally closes? Um, Melissa, I'm, uh, I know I'm very contrary. <laughs> everybody has the little boxes, you know, on their screen, but they're in different orders for everybody if you hadn't figured that out yet. So I'm going in. Mm -hmm front and back in my order like we're at a table so it, this may not be your order uh, so melissa i'm picking on you first um I'll, I'll be the contrary one i have not liked all the bringing back everybody um it it has felt to me like it's it's sort of fan service and it is like a tour it's almost like we're going along with the tour of the people doing you know the actors and the crew doing the show and it's their little fun farewell tour um, but it hasn't been real fun for me because they bring, bring people back just to bring them back, it seems, and then kill them off. Or they bring them back and they're not really them. You know, I don't like alternate universe people. Um, you know, that's not my Bobby. That's not my Charlie. So I have not enjoyed that at all. And I think Mary would have been left better as she was sort of this 
um, she was a myth, she was a ghost, and she should have stayed that way. She was an idea that propelled them, you know, but when she became real and concrete and, um, you know, uh, human, it sort of took something away from the yeah. entire show. I thought she was she was like the thing that they yearned for. And that's the classic her, don't don't meet your heroes. Yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Because yeah, she too much meeting of heroes. <laughs> and she actually originally, as you're, you're talking about, not only was she just a symbol, especially for Sam, but <clears throat> the image, the only image we really had of her was trapped on the ceiling in. In case, you know, engulfed in flames, which was such a powerful image that it carried her as a a character for years. You know, so I was kind of, when they introduced her. I was, uh, you know, I I actually liked her character overall, but but she was not. But that did destroy that aspect of her. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and there's the episode Home, I think it is, where they go back to the house, and at the very end of that she burns herself up for to save her boys. And mm -hmm. then that never gets alluded to again and suddenly she's back. And I don't, I don't like that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be consistent. Um, to me that it sort of um, cheapened her sacrifice, I guess. But again, there's been, I have a problem with everybody coming back from the dead every two days too. So that's, that's me being contrary. I have not enjoyed the, um, journey to the end, mm -hmm. I think, as much as I'd hoped to. Well, I don't think it's, uh, I actually don't find that very con contrary, other than there's people who are just determined to love it no matter what. Yeah. But uh, actually, it was one of my fears was that they would do this. I'll give them the, I've only seen the first two episodes of season 15, because it just released on Netflix. But um, uh, on a different Supernatural panel, I think I was on Gail, uh, we were talking about um, with this very subject and how like in uh, Seinfeld, that final episode, they just trotted out every character who got to say their catchphrase and leave and it really had no bearing on anything and it was kind of silly. Um, what they're doing here so far is yes, they're trotting them out, but they're at least embedding it within a story uh, that, you know, I mean, it's, it, they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. And yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I totally understand why you might not be happy about it, but I, at least I find it more palatable than what I've seen done in other shows. Yeah. Crystal? Um, I, was, I, I like Melissa was not a big fan of Mary coming back. Um, I, I think that with the boys having her back, it did kind of more more of a disservice to them than it did for her being there. I mean, she comes back and, oh, it's my boys. And then she's like, oh, I can't take this. So I'm going to leave for a little while. And then she goes away. And from my perspective, I think her going away or coming back and then going away again kind of, to me, hurt the boys a little more than the first time especially Sam because he was so little and he didn't know her um and then to get to know her and for her to leave again I feel just um I I didn't particularly care for that arc um now having all of the people come back I think it is kind of like a a fan service like having Kevin come back and then um realizing that well, not realizing we all knew he was in hell, but um, just to have him come back just for purposes and then have him leave again in, in the way that he did. I don't, I don't particularly care for that. Um, but I mean, if they were going to continue going on this route, I am a big, huge advocate for please bring Crowley back and have oh, yeah. something different done with him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> happening. Oh my God. I love that, this Crowley more Crowley. <laughs> I'd love to see Crowley back, but yeah. I, I believe the actor and the, the oh. studio were... are not happy with each other. No. Yeah. <laughs> Hank? Yeah, I, uh, I will um, second Crystal's because it's always been like, you know, oh, well, we get to see Crowley, you know, his, his mom's queen of hell. Can, she can do something, but apparently you can't get past the studio, um, <clears throat> no matter where you are. <laughs> 
guess something uh, would happen. It can't trump the studio, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yes, <laughs> the studio is out. Um, I yeah, and I I kind of agree. Like some of these have felt, um, and I'm drawing a a blank on the um, uh, the character who is a werewolf now, and he's a dentist. Garth. Garth. Garth, thank you. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Yes, I, I loved seeing Garth, and I thought that was a really fun uh, revisit. And, you know, he was such a fun character to begin with, and I thought all of it, just the way they played it into the storyline, it, it helped, and that he, you know, got to rescue them and do that kind of stuff, you know, and, and, and <laughs> rescue Dean from his tooth thing, but, um, which was also fun. So that was good to see. But, yeah, I think uh, things like um, Kevin, right, was a, was a little bit kind of felt oddly placed or sort of forced in so while it's been fun to see some of those recurring characters come back um it is uh i think you you know you kind of have to juggle it and it's uh so it's been it's been good um as long as it serves the main storyline they're trying to tell and sometimes i don't it doesn't feel like it like i said with kevin it didn't really feel like like they had to really work to make that all come in I suspect that some of that also has to do with people's shooting schedules because oh, yeah. I know I had read, we got that little Benny cameo in the mm -hmm. fight that wasn't a real fight in the bunker that was all shot with red and, and we got a Benny cameo and right. apparently he was shooting elsewhere and Jensen called him and said, look, I'd really like you to come in and, and do a day shoot with us. And that was kind of a personal favor, mm -hmm. let's work around the schedule sort of thing. But I wouldn't be surprised if that doesn't drive some of this. Like we have the um, Dark Kira coming back and <clears throat> that not really settling that arc because we never really did settle up with the Sword of Michael. I mean, if I were her, mm -hmm. I'd still be pretty pissed about that. Um, and I wasn't crazy about how they handled that in the first place. Why just take the sword and not the warrior who's good at using the sword and then you get it broken for her? But that's a different rant. Um, but in that, where they sort of wrapped up the whole crowd that were going to be the wayward, wayward sisters, wayward daughters, whatever it was going to be, mm. um, I know they couldn't get Claire. They mentioned her by, by name. They talked about talking to her on the phone because she's shooting another series. So some of this is also limited by the real world practicalities of who's available um, as much as we might like to see them in a longer storyline. Um, I, I they, think, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say they also have the trouble that, the, the problem that they have a monumental task here. You know, if they had ended it after season five or even season six or seven, it would have been hard, but there, but every year the show lasted longer, made it a bigger and bigger task to try and bring this thing together. And on top of that, if they had done an episode where they didn't trot out any of the old characters, people would be complaining about that yeah. too. So they're trying yeah. to balance this and it's, oh, I yeah. mean, you know, if they pull anything off that's that, if they, they manage to stick any kind of landing that isn't bad, <laughs> that's impressive feat because we mm -hmm. certainly can list all the shows that failed at that. <laughs> Crystal has come out of the darkness and into the light. He has. <laughs> <laughs> Watching Zoom uh, panels in this time has taught us so much about the mechanics yes. of doing video yeah. as well yes. as what the topic is. Yes. So, um, um, I did. Yeah, go ahead. I did want to say one thing. Um, I was very, I guess I could say I was very happy that they decided to bring back Rachel's Meg, mm -hmm. even though it was for that very short, short section. And I'm sorry, Stuart, because you probably haven't seen this part yet. Oh, but I, I assume I'm going to get spoilers whenever I do a super <laughs> panel. It's okay. <laughs> but I was, I was super, super excited about um, Rachel coming back. Um, yeah. Sorry. And I think they did it brilliantly because um, if, if you don't know, she, she uh, uses a wheelchair now. And so mm -hmm. there was a discussion that I think it's um, multiple sclerosis. Is that yes. what it is? Oh, the uh, actress. Yeah, the actress. Yes. And that's why she, that's also why, part of why Meg was written out because she just wasn't 
able to continue the physical demands of, of uh, the part. And she had said at one point that if she came back, she'd really love to see her character in a wheelchair um, because representation. And while they didn't quite do that, she got the throne of, you know, the empty. So that's, that's pretty spiffy. And I did love seeing her coming back, even though it wasn't really her. Uh, I, I love that we got to see, see Rachel again as Meg. Yeah. I, I have mixed feelings on, you know, the parade of folks. And, and I agree, I think, with Hank about it depends on how it's done. Because um, I, I loved the Garth episode because I thought it just ended well for him. And I was happy that somebody gets a happily ever after because they're rare on this show. Oh, yeah. And I was happy it was Garth. And while it's not our Bobby and it's not our Charlie, I really don't want to see them die again. But we did get to see an alternate ending with them shooting the boys who were vampires. Maybe not also how I want to see it go down. I do hope we get a good ending with Donna and Jody because they've been with us for a while and they're so important. And it would be nice to have major female characters who don't die bloody. Uh, just, just as a one-off, that would be fun. So it, it kind of all depends on how they've done it. It's nice seeing the familiar faces. I'm sure it's been fun for them. I don't personally have a problem with fan service if it's done well, because I prefer knowing that they're hearing us and receptive to that to the, well, this is my show and you can't tell me what to do with it, mm -hmm. even though the fans are the ones keeping it alive. You know, I, so think, I, kind I, of I think part of what you're, part of that is also that which, which characters they bring back. Because as I'm listening to you all talk and I'm thinking about it, it's occurring to me, like, not to keep picking on poor Kevin, but there was no need to bring him back. His story was well completed. Uh, you know, we'd already went through those emotions that, as you said, you don't need to see someone die again kind of a thing. And, you know, um, whereas Jody, her story is still going. So we do want closure to that. We didn't, we don't really need, Bobby's been back a couple of times. <laughs> you know, we don't need, I love Bobby. He's probably one of my favorite characters, but there's no it, urgent, me, urgent need to see him again. I think that's a part of it too, is is because you can't, especially a show this long, you can't bring everybody back. So you have to be real careful about how you choose, make that choice, I think. Well, and another problem with that is um, one of the reasons I don't think they can, I have grave doubts about there being a satisfactory ending to the whole thing um, because they've made death impermanent. It's, it's meaningless. People die and they come back next week. And I don't know how you end a show that's so much about endings without uh, at, mm, the finality of that. Mm -hmm. it's, they've sort of undercut themselves from being able to write something um, with any finality to it, I think. Although, well, this There's, being said, only having, only having seen two episodes, but it does seem to be at least they're setting up this theme where, you know, with all, all, the go, all, the, all of Hell released, and Dean's like, what the hell have we been doing this for then? <laughs> so they, it seems like they're grappling with that, that question, at least. So hopefully that grappling will come to a conclusion of some sort. Yeah, they could leave us with Schrodinger's show where it's dead or depending on where it's <laughs> Is it over or isn't it over? <laughs> yeah. I actually um, would like that if they just, if they really wouldn't finish the rest of it and just leave it right now so that it's open-ended, I'd be happy with that. I'm, I might be the only one, but I'm <laughs> happy with that. There is so much curtain fic out there in the fanfic universe with <clears throat> every flavor of ending you could possibly want. <laughs> that that that's kind of covered, you know, yep. and some of those are really, really well done. So you talked about, you know, gee, if they just left it where it is, and of course the last episode that we've seen is The Gamblers, which is, I think, one of my new favorites. I just rewatched it and I thought it was so well done. But that brings up the whole issue of Chuck trying to convince them that they never were heroes, which I think a lot of us just went, wait, what, you know, these guys, even if, even if there was no supernatural element, they've been trained by a Marine. These guys have been paramilitary since they were in diapers. 
they, they've got skills, even if they didn't have supernatural help. And then the, the last episode with Fortuna kind of put that back in place that you're heroes. What do you think about that whole, was, was Chuck just selling them some BS to undercut their nerve? Was he doing some mind games? Uh, what do you think? Um, I 100% believe Chuck was doing some mind games um, because if Sam and Dean and Cass and everybody aren't on their A game, then he can, I want to say a cuss word, but I don't want to. He can mess with them as much as he wants to. Um, and if he's in their head, they're not going to, like I said, they're just, they're not going to be 100%. So if he can get under their skin, then he can basically do whatever he wants and somewhat get away with it until they get back together um, where they need to be. Melissa, you, you, um, I'm thinking, <laughs> um, It's been a while since I've watched that one. I'm trying to remember, but um, I mean, to me, they're they're heroes. Whether I guess what they accomplish sticks or not, they behave heroically, um, and that doesn't change. But the the part that I'm still not sure about is the whole fate versus free will. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure where the show itself is coming down on that, and I I hope that gets resolved by the ending. Um, but I'm. So that's a pretty good thing through the show is yeah, it yeah. team free will and predestination, destiny versus, you know, the ability to choose. So that, that is a big one to get wrong. Yeah. Um, mm. Hank, what do you think? Um, I think that they are, uh, I think it's a, it's a heroic arc for both of them because they are both, um, I want to say selfless, but kind of not really, but they sacrifice a lot to do what they do. And it's the only life they know, right? Letting, you know, hunting things and, you know, so, um, uh, and I think that um, they really do need to address that um, uh, question of fate or free will, or at least come up with some kind of uh, have them come to some kind of conclusion about that because that's that like you said gail that's they've been building through this through the whole series that's been like a question through the whole series is you know can you choose your own ending kind of thing so and now you know they've built through this for the whole thing I, I would i would really love to have been in the writer's room like way back in the early seasons you know when they were talking about chuck when they first introduced chuck did they have any idea that you know we're, let's let's save him for like a big bad kind of thing you know or let's you know i i would just those kinds of things where you just always want to see where it, the idea originated and then you know did they finally just say well okay here we are season 15 what are we gonna do <laughs> you know <laughs> looking at all the name cards and characters they have up there and like you know you know we really haven't done much with chuck lately so <laughs> i i think uh well i i I personally think they had no, uh, when they introduced Chuck first, they had no idea where it was going. Yeah. Um, I mean, did they think he was God? That was, well, I was going to say, I don't even think that, I think, yeah. well, because he's originally introduced as a uh, kind of a prophet. Right. And, uh, and I think that's all it was. Um, and then they started playing with, but because he was writing the, the, you know, because it got very meta with him writing yes. the supernatural media tie in books. Yeah. Um, they, you know, they saw an opportunity and went with it. Uh, and I don't think they intended him to be the big bad at the end of the run of the show because from year to year, they didn't know if they were at the end of the show True. <laughs> until I do believe if, if not before, certainly by season 14, they knew at some point during season 14, though they didn't publicly announce it, they knew that next season was going to be the last yeah. season. And that's when they said, okay, then we're going to end season 14 this way. This is because it's a logical, by that point, it's a logical conclusion after everything else that they fought that, that this would be the big bad. There's nothing they could really make worse for these boys um, or more challenging. Yeah. I, I think 
that if they don't come down on the side of free will, it kind of betrays the whole legacy of the show. And I'm not really sure what you do with that as a philosophical statement. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Your story is already written. Don't struggle. Just give in. Uh, that, that's just <laughs> right. not much of a legacy to put right. out there. No. And it, it also undercuts the entire show. The entire show is about every season on on some level is about the world saying to the boys, "This is what it is," and then saying, "No, we can do. We can fix that. We can change that. We can fight against that." Yeah, and and even with characters like Garth, where Dean and Sam came to grow into the idea, like with Lenore, that not everything supernatural had to be evil, and they could, and as Sam has said many times about himself, it's 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 who you are, not not how you were born or what your circumstances were. It's what you choose. The whole idea of choice, and so. I, I think that would be a horrific way to take it. And and I don't think it was set well with anybody. I can't imagine that that working well, but I'm, you know, we'll, we'll talk about endings we, we hope we don't have to hate. But while we're talking about Chuck, it was raised on another panel, um, the possibility, because, you know, of course, this whole idea that Chuck is the big bad doesn't sit well with a number of Chuck fans, um, as well as other folks for whom, you know, Supernatural skates all around <laughs> people's actual beliefs in some cases. And that goes easy or hard depending on the individual and, you know, maybe how, how tightly they hold some of those things. And so the idea that God's the ultimate bad guy has caused some rifts. Uh, it was brought up that perhaps Chuck wasn't really Chuck, that perhaps Chuck is being influenced by the empty or by Amara or so it's kind of a Hail Mary pass, pardon the pun, that makes Chuck <laughs> it's, how do you not make puns when they're all in the show? Um, right. What do you what do you think? I mean I come down on the side that yeah, having done the rewatch, I think there's an awful lot of evidence from him saying I'm a cruel and capricious God to so many things that he's done that I think, yeah, I, I think it's Chuck, but what do you guys think? Well, I'll start because I was on that panel with you and I actually have thought about that a little more and, and I, I'm with you. I don't buy, I, I could see how a writer could take those, like the, the empty and these other things and try and, and, you know, shoehorn in a different thing, but Ultimately, I come back to the introduction of angels in the, in the story, and, and uh, I'm sure you all probably have heard this already, but uh, uh, for our audience who might not know, they were having trouble. They were in this rut of every week's going to be a new bad guy, and they didn't know what to do with it all. And um, they, they had demons already, but they really didn't know what, how they were going to deal with angels or if they were going to deal with them. And one day, uh, I don't know who's the head writer, the producer, somebody got it, came, came running into the, the writer's room and said, I got it. Angels are dicks. And that's, <laughs> that's how they, they went with it. And so, I mean, the idea that people are upset that Chuck is this petulant ultra dick is ridiculous because we've had a decade of his minions being the way they are. You don't get that from, you know, <laughs> I mean, that didn't come out of nowhere. He obviously is going to be what he is. And he's not hidden that. He's, he's always been this childish, these are my, you're all my toys and I'll play with them when I want. And if I don't like it, I'm leaving. And, you know, he's, I don't see how he could be anything but what he is. We also had the testimony all these years of Lucifer and Michael that he is who he is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hank, you're nodding. I'm nodding, because I agree. I think, you know, and and I can see that um, Chuck being, becoming bored, 
And, you know, he's like, he's played with this for so long and on so many worlds, obviously, that we're seeing, you know, that, uh, that he's now like, oh, I'm done with that one, you know, just you know, delete file <laughs> kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so he, um, it's, it's gonna, I, I just don't know how they're gonna, and I know we'll probably get to that, but what they're gonna do for that final, you know, wrap up. And, and he, uh, I, I think it is him. And I think they have, like Stuart said, I think they have built towards um, uh, revealing him to be this kind of a character. Um, and, um, you know, a, like ego, right? A lot of ego, like, and I always go back to my, uh, a lot of people's favorite episode, but mine is episode 200, the musical episode. And it's like, that was, that was such a huge fan service and that was so much fun. And then like for him to come in at the end, you know, to be like, you know, the publisher to be interested in the musical, it's kind of like, you know, I want to see what you've done with, with my creation. How have you honored me? So it's, it's kind of a, I do think that's him. And I think they're characterizing him. They're just kind of like said, all right, gloves off. Let's show Chuck's true mm -hmm. colors. Crystal, Melissa? <laughs> I have, I agree. I think this probably at, at this point, this is, this is who Chuck is. Um, it leaves us with a really unpleasant world. Like there are no good guys except Sam and Dean and, and they're questioning whether or not they're actually heroes sort of thing. Like how do you succeed in a world where there are no good guys in some ways, you know, God's a jerk. The demons are jerks. The angels are jerks. <laughs> you're all on your own. Yeah. You're on your own. And you might not even have free will, so suck it up, kids. <laughs> you know, one interesting thing they could do, they, they've already established through the seasons that there were other gods before, you know, other uh, cultures, and that those gods, people stopped believing in them and they faded away and, all, and so forth. Uh, and, um, and they've established that, that, Chuck at times is more powerful than at other. He's not always, he's not all, he, he pretends to be all powerful, but he's not, he has limits. So I could conceive of an ending in which, which Sam and Dean realize they have free will, realize they are hero, the heroes they need to be. And not, and not only defeat God, but through, some great magic spell and they bring Rowena in and everybody who, you know, all work together and they just get rid of heaven and hell completely. That's done. That's no longer a thing. Then earth is what we make of it as individual, the ultimate free will. We do what we, what we can make of it. I'd go for that. <laughs> there, there are some excellent curtain fix written to the idea that they actually did close the gates to heaven and hell and with no monsters there was no need to hunt and so the only thing they needed to deal with were people but they could go on their merry way so yeah i was thinking kind of the same thing crystal um yeah i think i think chuck is is chuck i don't think i've ever it's ever crossed my mind that he could that somebody else could be influencing him i just think that um things aren't going the way that he wants it at the moment so he's having a, a temper tantrum of like a five-year-old and he's like, I want it my way and I want it how I want it. And if it's not going to be that way, then I'm just going to destroy shit and make it the way I want it to be. Um, that's kind of how I always saw Chuck as like this overarching dick. Um, and he can just puppeteer everybody to how he wants them. And if they veer off in any way, then he punishes them. And he's, he's, yeah, he's just a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, I want to talk about two more things here before our time is up. And let's talk first about how we're afraid the show might end. Bad outcomes, what we, what we don't want to see. And then let's talk about what we do want to see and what would make us really happy as fans and be, in our eyes, true to the legacy. So let's get the bad out of the way first. What are you afraid of happening here at the end? Hank, I'm going to pick on you first. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I think my biggest fear is that it'll be a cliffhanger. 
So there will be no resolution. It'll be some kind of, you know, uh, them going up against impossible odds. And then there's no resolution. There's no, like, you know, them driving off into the sunset kind of thing. I think it's like, that would be the show has a, um, not a history, but uh, has a nature for doing things like that. Like, you know, kind of veering away from those happy endings, but to see it as a cliffhanger, not knowing what's happening, I think that would be, I would not like that. <laughs> I'll put it that way. <laughs> Stuart? Uh, I don't want to see uh, any, any version of a circular story where, uh, where what they defeat God or whatever happens, but then ultimately they're back in the car driving off for another case and nothing's really, they, they because of the length of this show, there needs to be some type of finality to whatever there happens. Um, but it, if it ends up with them just, you know, it could be another season. No, <laughs> that would be a bad ending, I think. How about you, Melissa? I can think of so many bad endings. <laughs> um, I, w I want the question of fate versus free will to be definitively answered, I think. Um, I really hope they don't do something cheesy like uh, wrap it all up in a bow and then start over. So Sam and Dean, we see young Sam and Dean, but no, no um, Azazel or, you know, nobody coming into the, the room late at night and they grow up and happy and, you know, they get, they get to have that life over again. I don't want them to go back and make it okay, I guess. I mean, I want these guys to live with the trauma they've been through and who they are now. And um, to be, have peace with that, but I don't want it wrapped up in a nice little bow. Yeah, I, I, I think them, like waking them up from a dream um, and them having the happy life with mom and dad, I think that would be completely disastrous. I don't think that would, um, that should never have been an end, be an idea in the in the writer's room. Um, the I'll be in the ending for those of us old enough to remember Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I I've been struggling with how I think it should end for quite a while. Um, I I I I like Hank. I don't want him to, or maybe it was Stuart. I don't want him to like get in the car and head off to another case because then that's not really an ending. And it's like, if they're still going, what has this 15 years been for? You know, it's, it's leaving us to think that it, they, if it ends with free will, that they have free will, but then they're still being puppeteered by something because they still have to go off and fight and they can never just be Sam and Dean. But then on the other hand, what is Sam and Dean without them? fighting to make the world better so i'm just i i guess i'm still kind of trying to grapple with how i think it should end and how i well i know how i don't want it to end but yeah so <laughs> i i've got a couple of things i really hope they don't do one of them is for me i want the boys together at the end dead or alive but i want them together i think they've earned that whether it's in their shared heaven or whether they just go out like Butch and Sundance, I, I don't want one to be left behind. So I don't want them to do a mirror image of Swan Song where this time Dean dies, but Sam gets, you know, God help us, Sam goes back to Amelia and has his dog. Uh, no. Please, God, no. No, um, please, no. <laughs> so, so that's another one I re that would be very in character, but please don't, don't go there. If they did that, they'd also have the problem that that would not end the show because there's no way uh, Sam's just going to sit by. <laughs> That's the whole problem. They never let their brother die. Right. Whichever yeah. one dies, the other's going to work to bring him back. Well, and the one time that we were told, and I don't think any of us actually believe that's truly what happened, but the one time they tried to tell us Sam didn't do it, then he paid for it for the next five seasons. So Sam now just burns down heaven and hell if, if Dean dies to show his loyalty. 
The mm -hmm. other thing that scares me a bit, there are two ways series end. And we've seen this in shows like The Sopranos and um, How I Met Your Mother and a number of others. There are some endings that are a love letter to the fans. They are true to the show's core. They are respectful of the show and its legacy and its characters. And they really do wrap it up with the best kind of bow that you could use for that particular show. Then there are the ones that really aren't about the show or the fans at all. They're really about the show runner wanting to be on the cover of Variety. Ooh, look at the edgy, uh, different thing that he did with this show. What a surprise. And it's not about the show or the fans or the legacy at all. It is boosting the reputation in the industry of the showrunner at the expense of the show. And to me, something like the end of How, you Met, How I Met Your Mother or The Sopranos is that more than it is. Uh, and I, I think a lot of fandom doesn't completely trust Dab for an, Andrew Dab for a number of reasons. And I'm just afraid the guy might go there, in addition to all the fears that you guys have, have mentioned. So that, that's, those are kind of my- I feel like he's been dabbling in that all along. Ha ha, another pun. Mm -hmm. He's he's really some, there's been some ego and some antagonism that comes through toward the fans that I don't get. Yeah. No, um, I don't get it either. And but I mean, we've also the, those of us in the creative business have seen people act like that toward their fans. Who are going? You do understand how this business works, right? They keep you in business. They're the reason you're in business. Again, yeah, never mind. Um, no, I agree. Uh, and I, I don't get it, but I, I really hope he does better than that. I, it, if that is his, um, if that's his first idea, I hope there's enough pressure from Jared and Jensen and Kripke and the others to make him behave. But I well, guess that, that is, I mean, the, bo the boys, there are a lot of people who actually own a piece of this show now. So it's not, just, no, you know, I find it hard to believe that any ending will be able to uh, uh, be controlled by one ego. With as invested as Jared and Jensen are in the right. show at this point, and they've said how invested they are in, in their characters in this end run, and that they're not dialing it in on their way to do something else. They're, they're fully present. And how cognizant they are of the show's legacy and its meaning. I would, I would think that at this point they have enough clout to have stopped something that they really thought would have been horrific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but then again, I know nothing of the inside of television production. Actors have no power, honestly. <laughs> but that, that's my point is they're not just actors. They're, they're producers of the show. They, I mean, they are... They're not producers at this point. They're just... Jensen's been a director, yeah, and have a significant I amount. They of were producers. Personal clout. Um, they turned down producing. Okay, well, they certainly have clout. <laughs> they have some clout. Because all they have to do is say no. We refuse to do that story. And why the two producing? What, you know, Melissa? What's that? Um, you know producing is more time, even well, more time spent, and they were, you know, mm -hmm. they're away so much as it is. Yeah, when you've got your family on the other side of the continent and you're commuting yeah. every weekend or so, that's pretty bad. So let's end this on a high note, as high note and happy note as Supernatural can end on. Uh, how do you want to see it end? In, in your, you know, dark shriveled heart, how would you like to see this show end? Melissa? Well, oh, go ahead, oh, Melissa. Go, go ahead, I have to think on it. Oh. Uh, my ending is, is, is pretty simple. They die. <laughs> I don't think there's any way they other. I just don't see how they can live on. Um, I think it was Crystal was saying that they're not anything if they're not fighting something. And so I think the best thing is that they, they save the world. They defeat Chuck, but in, in doing it, they make the ultimate sacrifice themselves. And then, uh, and then it's up to how, how you want to treat the fans. I, I'd be fine with a very tragic, like bittersweet ending like that with people 
honoring their grave or something like that. But I'd also be just as fine if we get a, a clip of them in some sort of true heaven where they're, you know, walking and seeing, they're still them, they still remember all their, their history. And there's Bobby welcoming them in and, you know, other people like that. I could see that being done as well. Jump in. <laughs> I could see that. I could live with that one. Um, I have uh, not a serious fantasy ending, but one where everything blows up, everybody dies, and then suddenly Garth pops up and says, did I miss anything? <laughs> <laughs> That would be funny. <clears throat> How about you, Hattie? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Crystal. Go ahead, Crystal. Go ahead. Um, I, I, I agree with Stuart. I think anything other than them going down, kind of, like in a blaze of glory, um, kind of would not, for one, end the show. Because if they're off riding into the sunset, again, they're going to be fighting no matter where they are. Um, I, I, I agree with... I, I think that, you know, them ending the show with them in heaven, um, Dean with a big, huge fucking apple pie, and Sam with a beer, and, you know, maybe John sitting with them, Bobby, I, I think something like that would would be kind of like where I would want to see it. Um, no matter what happens, we're still going to have people who are very upset with the ending because, for one, it ended. Um, and it's not going to be the way that they want it, but I think the blaze of glory, um, and then them being in heaven with each other, of course, um, kind of is where I'm veering towards the end. Hank? Yep. I, I'm, I'm right there about that. Uh, the blaze of glory, I think it's going to be, it's a good resolution because like they've said, uh, Stuart and Crystal had said, um, you know, just having them go off, they don't, they haven't like go off and do like another season, right? It's just, it's not a good ending for them. They, you know, it's like they haven't earned anything and I want them to be able to like have a gift at the end of all of this. So have that blaze of glory. And then I've been thinking it would be really cool to see if they defeat Chuck and to see Castiel kind of step into that role and assume the God position and start running heaven, maybe making changes, right? And so Sam and Dean together, and then, you know, maybe giving him some crap about the way that he's actually doing it or something like that. So, you know, I thought that would be kind of a, an interesting twist to see Castiel step up and become that leader that he's been trying to be, but not, but kind of re resisting being, so. Yeah, I, uh, I actually think they might be setting Jack up for that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. Yeah. Um, I because I don't want Jack to after 15 years be the one who fixes everything when it's really Sam and Dean's show just another you know fear uh, much as I love the character and the actor but Jack is more powerful than Castiel Cass has already had his shot at God and didn't do well from it um, mm. but Jack now coming back with all this extra power and perhaps absorbing even the power if this is how we get rid of God and Amara. Um, and he's that dichotomy of good and evil. That could be really interesting, having him step, step into heaven and heaven and hell closed. I do think it, it, for me, it needs to end with a blaze of glory, the two of them going out together. But what I would love, and, and having it end with them dead doesn't preclude them ever coming back and doing... Uh, short miniseries or even or a movie of the lost files you know we know there's a lot mm -hmm. of time that we didn't see in the show that passed there's a whole missing year between you know season five and six that the show just mm -hmm. kind of passed um so they could always come back and do that and they wouldn't have to bring them back from the dead i want to see them walk into harville's roadhouse and Ash and Ellen and Joe and John, who she's not going to shoot now, and every you know everybody's there, and they get a they you know get a beer, and they they're in heaven in Harvel's Roadhouse with their family and their found family. That that would be my perfect ending, which mm. you know I'm sure we're not going to get, but that's where that's what I'm holding out for. <laughs> 
Well, folks, this has been fantastic. And as usual, when you get Supernatural fans together, we could do this all day. But uh, it's actually time to wrap us up. Let's go through and just say briefly where people can find you online. Um, Stuart? Uh, you can find me at stuartjaffe.com or on Facebook or go to Amazon and put my name in and you'll see everything I'm doing. Thank you, Hank. Uh, yep, uh, my website is hankedwardsbooks.com and you can find me on Facebook and uh, on Amazon. I've got an author page, so you can look me up there. Okay. Melissa? Uh, mainly on Facebook, it's Melissa Smith Kennedy. Uh, we also have a page for conventional wisdom on uh, Facebook and uh, there's a web page, but it's kind of hard to find right now. <laughs> okay, and Crystal? Um, I'm on Facebook, of course, uh, Crystal Payne Gallegos, and I am on Twitter um, <clears throat> as Chris with a green heart and an arrow, and then um, on Instagram as I am Remelted. Okay. Well, wonderful. Thank you guys very, very much for being here. I'm Gail Z. Martin uh, and Morgan Bryce, so I'm pretty easy to find too. The website is gailzmartin.com or morganbryce.com. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. If you start with Gail Z. Martin or G. Z. Martin or Morgan Bryce, you'll find me out there. And then I also run the Supernatural TFWNC group on Facebook, where we have a lot of fun uh, with all kinds of cool stuff going on. So please come join us. This has been the Supernatural track for Continual. And we're so thrilled to have had another fun conversation here. There'll be more coming. So join us for more Legends, lore, and love about Supernatural. See you soon.